What's up, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about the false prophet of the book of Revelation. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about the false prophets or the false prophet and the false prophets, plural. But today we're just going to be mainly dealing with the false prophet, the main false prophet of Revelation or the book of Revelation in today's mini Bible study. Uh, again, my name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media if you guys want to. So let's get started. Again, we're going to be talking about the false prophet. Um, but before, it's going to be kind of a deep uh, Bible study. So before we get started with the false prophet, there has to be the foundation, right? We have to lay the foundation first. And uh, in order for us to lay the foundation, we're going to have to um, look at Revelation 13. Now, in Revelation 13, we see the first beast and the second beast and also the mark of the beast. We're going to look at the description of the first beast first. Now, again, we're only going to be uh, laying the foundation first in order for us to really figure out who is the false prophet. So we're going to be laying the foundation first. And we need to know who the first beast is. We need to know who the second beast is in order for us to know who the, uh, the false prophet is. The false prophet, I believe, in Revelation is found in chapters 16 and 19. But again, guys, we need, it's very important for us to lay the foundation first before anything. So again, we're looking at the first beast and we see that the description of the first beast here Starting from verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So this beast, the first beast, is going to be a beast, and he's going to be blasphemous. The name of blasphemy is upon uh, his, uh, his heads. And then it says, And the beast which I saw was likened unto, like unto a leopard, and his feet was the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So who is the dragon here? So again, we have a beast. We have a beast with the name of blasphemy on his heads. The dragon gave him his uh, seat and authority. Let's keep going. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped dra the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? So this beast will be worshipped, and who is able to make war with him? It's a religious and political beast. A religious and political beast. Okay. Uh, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. There goes the, the word again, blasphemy. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. So he will continue 40 and 2 months. So this is pretty much the five descriptions that, there, that we're going to look at today. Um, of course, there are more descriptions. There are more characteristics of the first beast. In Revelation 13 but we're only going to be looking at five of them and once we look at the, the five of these uh, descriptions you're gonna soon figure out if you know history uh, or if you know history or church history you're gonna soon figure out in your head who is this beast okay we're gonna look at that those five descriptions five characteristics of this beast of course there's more in Revelation 13 more description more characteristics about the beast, but we're looking at these five. We're looking at what is a beast in Bible prophecy, what uh, what is blasphemy in the Bible, who is the dragon. Um, we know that this beast is going to uh, to be worshipped, and it will uh, be political. Um, it's it's both religion and state, religion and po uh, politics are political, and then also this beast is going to reign forty and two months which is in the Hebrew calendar, there's only 30 days per month. So 42 months, 30 days per month, 1260 literal, I mean, prophetic days. Okay, so again, what is a beast a symbol of in the Bible, in, in Bible prophecy? What is blasphemy in the Bible? Who is the dragon? 
um, this beast we know is going to be a religious and political beast, and he will reign for 1260 prophetic days. So before we go on, I'm just going to let you guys know that we're going to be jump, jumping around in the Bible just a little bit. And the reason why we jump around, the, the reason why we go from, from scripture to scripture to scripture, from different, uh, different verses and different passages of the Bible, is because this is how we get the truth. I can't give you guys my opinion. So if, if, if the Bible says in Revelation 13, talks about a beast, I can't tell you guys what a beast is. We have to go to the Old Testament to uh, figure out what a beast is. And we have to let the Bible interpret itself. Isaiah 28. Let's go to Isaiah 28 really quick. Isaiah 28, starting from verse 9. Isaiah 28, starting from verse 9. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? Talking about God. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. And verse 13 says the same thing. But the word of God, or the word of the Lord, was unto them, Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and, and snared and taken. So when we read the Bible, we must read precept upon precept, line upon line. We can't put our own opinions into the Bible. Like I said, in Revelation 13, it talks about a beast. I can't give you guys my opinion on what a beast is. We must go precept upon precept. We have to go to the Old Testament. Let the Old Testament tell us what is a beast in Bible prophecy. Okay? Um, precept upon precept is how we establish the truth. You see, the truth is kind of like a diamond. The truth is like a diamond. If you go up close, uh, you, you know how many sides a diamond has? A diamond has many sides. So if you go up close and you look only look at one side of the diamond, you're not looking at the big picture. You're only looking at one side. In order for you to get the, the full beauty of the diamond, you have to step back and look at every side of the diamond. That's why we do precept upon precept. Because if we only go to Revelation 13 and, and, and we read about the beast, we're not going to get much. We're not going to get much because we don't know what a beast is in, in Bible prophecy. We have to step back, look, up, uh, look at the whole picture as a whole, go to different passages and scripture and let scripture interpret what a beast is okay let scripture interpret scripture let the bible interpret the bible so um, again where what is a beast in bible prophecy what is uh blasphemy in the bible what is uh, who is the dragon and we know that this beast is going to be worshipped and will be a political beast and he will reign 40 and two months which is 1260 prophetic days in the bible so again Beast. What is a beast a symbol of in Bible prophecy? Let's go to Daniel 7 and verse 17. Daniel 7 and verse 17. Again, truth is like a diamond. We have to look at all sides. Okay? Here's what it says about the beasts. Here's what it says. Daniel 7 and verse 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So a beast in Bible prophecy is a king. But we know that king and kingdom are used synonymously in the Bible because you cannot have a king without a kingdom. You cannot have a, have a kingdom without a king. And it also says in um, verse 23, Thus he said, The fourth beast, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. See, we let the Bible confirm. We let the Bible confirm. We let the Bible interpret the Bible. The Bible confirms everything. Okay, so what is a beast a symbol of in Bible prophecy? A king or a kingdom, or now we call it a superpower. What is blasphemy in the Bible? Blasphemy in the Bible. Let's go to John, John chapter 10, starting from verse 30. This is when uh, Jesus Christ was talking to the Jews and to the Pharisees back then. Here's, uh, he's talking to them about who he is. And then here's what he says. He, he, he claims to be the son of God. He says, I and my father are one. 
And then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. So, for a man to claim to be God, that is blasphemy. For a man to claim to be God, that is blasphemy. Of course, it's okay with Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is God. But for a man to claim to be God, that is blasphemy. Now, let's go to Mark 2, verses 5 through 7. Jesus Christ is talking to the multitude and um, he was about to heal someone who is sick of the palsy. Check this out. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man speak what? Blasphemies. Who can forgive sins but God only? So now we have Jesus Christ forgiving sins. And then they are saying, This is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God only? That is the truth. Only God can forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. I can, I can, let's say you, you did a sin or you sinned against your sister. I can't forgive you of that sin because I'm not God. Right? But if my sister sinned against me, I can forgive her of that sin because it was, it's directed to me. The sin was directed to me. But for me to forgive your sin, if you sinned against your sister, I can't do that because I do not have the prerogative, uh, the, the, um, the powers of God. Okay? So, for a man to claim to be God on earth, that is blasphemy. And for a man to claim to have the power to forgive sin, that is blasphemy in the Bible. Okay? So, what about a dragon? What is a dragon a symbol of in Bible prophecy? Um, uh, uh, Revelation 12. Let's go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12 talks about the dragon. Verse 9. Here's what it says about the dragon. And the great dragon was cast out, the, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So who is the dragon? We're letting the Bible speak, right? If we let the Bible speak, the Bible tells us who the dragon is. Who is the dragon? The dragon is Satan. The dragon is Satan. Now, Here's a little bit, um, a, I guess, advanced Bible study technique for you guys. What is a dragon in the Bible? I mean, what, what is a dragon? What is a, what is a dragon? Just, just a question. What is a dragon? A dragon is a beast. And what is a beast a symbol of in Bible prophecy? A kingdom or a political power or a superpower. So we have this dragon, which is um, Satan. But there's another application. A dragon is a beast, and so this dragon also means that this. It, it, it also means that this dragon is also a political kingdom or a political power. A political power. Let's let's read a little bit more about this dragon. We can go to verse four, talking about the dragon now. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the ground or to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. Woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who is this child? And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. What child is this? Who is, who is this child? Who was caught up unto God and to his throne. He is sharing the throne of God. He's sharing the throne of God. Who is this child? None other than Jesus Christ. That man child is none other than Jesus Christ. And it says that this dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour Jesus Christ as soon as it was born. The dragon is a beast. So if this was a political power, who was, what was the political power during Jesus' um, time that tried to kill him as soon as he was born. Who was that political power? That would be pagan Rome. King Herod, if you guys go to the Gospels, King Herod was the one that wanted to kill Jesus um, because he heard this prophecy that Jesus Christ 
was the one that was born to rule uh, the Jews. And King Herod didn't like that. King Herod wanted to rule the Jews. He, he wanted to retain his name as king of the Jews. And so he ordered his men to go and kill um, uh, all of the male children, two years old and under. It was pagan Rome. It was pagan Rome. And by the way, King Herod wanted to kill um, the male children, two years old and under, in hopes that he would that one of them would be Jesus Christ that would have been killed. So who is this beast? Who is this dragon? Number one, it is Satan. And number two, it is pagan Rome. Because pagan Rome was the one that tried to kill Jesus Christ when he was born. Um, it says here, uh, Revelation 12 and verse 4, he was the one that wanted to devour her child as soon as it was born. That would be pagan Rome. And of course, it was Satan um, influencing pagan Rome to do this. Okay? So... Again, we have the beast. A beast is in the Bible is a symbol for um, a political power, a superpower. Uh, we have blasphemy, which is um, blasphemy is when uh, someone claims to be God, if a man claims to be God, and when a man claims to have the power to forgive sin. That is blasphemy. We have the dragon, which is Satan and pagan Rome. What's next? We have, um, again, in Revelation 13, it talks about uh, it talks about uh, that the beast is going to be worshipped and who can make war with the beast. So this beast is going to be religious and political. Okay? It's, it's going to be a religious and political kingdom. Alright? And then the 42 months. This is a little bit tricky. We have to go to the Old Testament to figure out what is a day, a symbol of in Bible prophecy. Again, um, this uh, superpower is going to reign 40 in two months, which is uh, 1260 days right 1260 prophetic days but what is a day a symbol of in bible prophecy let's go to numbers 14 and verse 34 here god makes a prophecy about the israelites he says after the number of the days in which ye uh, search the land even 40 days each day for a year Shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Ye shall know my breach of promise. He said each day in this prophecy, he said each day for a year. God had appointed in this prophecy each day for a year. So a day in the Bible, in, in Bible prophecy, is equal to a literal year. If you guys don't believe me, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 4 and verse 6. Again, God makes a prophecy about the house of Judah and the house of uh, uh, Israel. Here's what he says. Um, he tells uh, Ezekiel to lie on, his, uh, lie on his right side and lie on his left side. And then he, he says this, watch. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed each day for a year. So God makes a prophecy about the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He makes a time prophecy and he says, I have appointed each day for a year in this prophecy. So again, we have the day to year principle. Each day in Bible prophecy is equal to a year, literally. So a, a prophetic day is equal to a literal year. So in Revelation, we have the beast who is going to reign 40 in two months, which is 1260 prophetic days that would be 1260 literal years so again we have a beast symbol for a kingdom or a political power a superpower we have uh, blasphemy this beast is going to be blasphemous right it, it, that means then this beast or this political kingdom this political power this kingdom is going to claim to be god on earth and he's going to claim to have the power to forgive sin just by those two characteristics alone you guys should already know who the who the first beast is you guys should already know and then we have the dragon which is pagan rome giving this political power its seat giving this uh, uh kingdom its seat and authority and then we have um this beast being a religious and political power and then it's going to reign 40 in two months 
Who is this entity? None other than the, the, the Roman Catholic Church, the papacy. The papacy, the papacy is a kingdom. It's the smallest kingdom on earth, but it is a kingdom. The papacy does commit blasphemies. The papacy claims to be God on earth. You guys can, you guys can uh, uh, um, Google this. The papacy does claim to be God on earth. It's, been, it's, it's it, even in their uh, Catholic encyclopedia, in their catechism, they say, we hold on this earth the place of God. Even the name of the, um, uh, the Pope, Pope, that means Father. He calls himself the Holy Father. The official title of the Pope, Vicarious Filii Dei, meaning the replacement Christ. Christ is God. He's calling himself the Pope. He's calling himself the replacement God. The replacement God. The dragon. The dragon is Satan and pagan Rome. Did the beast get his seat? Did the beast, the papacy, get his seat and authority from the dragon? That's exactly what happened when Constantine left Rome and went to Constantinople. He had to leave someone in charge. Who did he leave in charge? The Bishop of Rome. The Bishop of Rome was left in charge. He was in charge of the ecclesiastical and civil power. And, the, and political power. So then we can say that the dragon, pagan Rome, gave the beast its seat and authority. The dragon gave the beast its seat and authority. What else is on the list? Is this beast a religious and political power? Yes. The papacy is a religious power, obviously. And it is also a political power. The Vatican even has its own army. The Swiss army, not only that, but the Vatican is also intermingling with different political powers and different political armies. So the Vatican is a religious and political kingdom, a religious and political power. Did this beast, the papacy, rule for 40 and 2 months, 1260 prophetic days, which is 1260 uh, literal years? Did the papacy rule for 1260 literal years? The papacy's power was established in the year 538 AD and lost its power 1798 AD when Napoleon wanted to arrest the Pope. And so he sent his general Berthier to arrest the Pope for no reason in 1798 AD. That's when the, uh, the papacy lost its power. So 538 AD to 1798 AD. How many years is that? 1260 years. There's no denying. I mean, there's so many more uh, we can talk about here, but there's no denying that this first beast is the papacy. So now that we know who the first beast is, we're going to have to know who the second beast is. And it's very simple. It's very simple. You just got to, you just got to know who is the, 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 the second beast. Supreme power after the papacy. Watch this. Revelation 13. Again, we're going to start from verse 11. The second beast. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. He spake as a dragon. So the second beast was coming up around the time the first beast went down. The second beast is coming up around the time the first beast went down. Remember, the first beast, which is the papacy, was uh, the Pope was arrested 1798. And that's when the papacy went down. So around the time, which would be set late 17, 1700s, around that time, there's going to be another beast, a second beast coming up out of the earth. Okay? Okay, again, it says, And I beheld another beast, the second beast, coming up out of the earth, he had two horns like a lamb. Who is a lamb in the Bible? Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. That would be Jesus Christ. So he had two horns like a lamb. Two horns like a lamb. And the lamb is Christ. So this would be a Christ-like nation. It would be a Christ-like nation. So... Just by those two uh, descriptions alone, 
we have two descriptions, right? We have uh, a second beast who's coming up right when the papacy is going down. That would be late 1700s. And he had two horns like a lamb. He would be a lamb-like beast, a Christ-like beast, a Christ-like political power. So then this second beast is going to be a Christian nation. The second beast is going to be a Christian nation that's going to come up around 1700s, around the late 1700s. What is the only entity you know that is a Christian nation that comes up around late 1700s? And it's going to be one of the most powerful uh, entities in the world. None other than United States of America. United States of America were the ones that came out of the earth late 1700s, 1776, Constitution, 1780, I believe, the Constitution was uh, ratified, around uh, late 1700s, Constitution was ratified. Um, uh, George Washington served as our first president in the late 1700s, and the United States of America began to be established, like people saw the United States of America as its own established nation in the year 1798. So this second beast is none other than the United States of America. And most specifically, more specifically, the um, Protestant, Protestantism of the United States of America, apostate Protestantism of United States of America. We'll get into that some other time. But generally, the second beast is the United States of of America. If you guys uh, want more information on this, I have a, a movie called From Babylon to America, and I we go through a whole study of who is the first beast and the second beast and the mark of the beast and all that. So if you guys want to learn more about that, the link is in the description. So anyways, let's read this again. Watch this. Watch. Talking about the talking about the, the, the second beast. Watch this. And he, the, the second beast, doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, uh, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, this beast, this uh, second beast, which is America, is going to perform miracles. And by those miracles, he's going to deceive them that dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image of the beast. And then he is also going to give out the mark of the beast. Remember this. The second beast is going to perform miracles. The second beast is going to perform miracles. The United States is going to perform miracles. In the sight of men, he's going to deceive those who dwell on the earth with those miracles. And he will uh, begin to give out the mark of the beast. Now let's go, watch this. Let's go to Revelation 16 now. Revelation 16, starting from verse 13. Check this out. Now this is talking about the false prophet. It talks about, um, look. Here's what it says. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. What? They are the spirits of devils working miracles. Working miracles. But here, those miracles or those spirits of the devils that work miracles come from the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the, mouth of the false prophet. Now let's go to Revelation 19 and check this out. It gets even clearer, more clear. 
Revelation 19 and verse 20. Check this out. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Does that sound familiar? This false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Who is him? The beast. So this false prophet is going to wrought miracles before the beast, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and had, and them that worshipped his image. So the false prophet, oops, sorry. So the false prophet is going to wrought miracles before the beast. And th those miracles are going to be the means in which he will deceive them that receive the mark of the beast. Does that sound familiar? We read about that in Revelation 13. In Revelation 13, about the second beast, here's what it says. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So then the false prophet and this second beast is the same entity. So then we now know that the false prophet is none other than the United States of America. Very clear. We, we let scripture interpret scripture. We let scripture interpret scripture. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Precept upon precept is how we establish truth, Bible truth. We cannot put our own opinions into it. We just let the Bible interpret itself. So now we know that the false prophet is none other than the USA, the United States of America. Very clear, very clear. If you guys want more information on this, we have a movie called From Babylon to America. Link is in the description. It's a two-hour Bible study on who the beast is, the second beast, and the mark of the beast. So please, if you guys want to check that out, make sure to uh, check that out. The link is in the description. If you guys were blessed by this Bible study, please like and share. Share with your friends, your family, your coworkers, anybody who you know would be blessed by this Bible study. And for those of you guys who are new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and also make sure to hit the bell so that you guys can get notified every time we upload new videos. And for those of you guys who want to support us, um, you can do so by praying for this online video ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. And we will take the donation money. We will use it for more Bible study films, Bible study videos, and also to advertise these films and videos so that we can reach more people Thank you guys. Praise God always. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace and chicken grease.